it gives you nothing again apart from that. It gives you nothing apart from that. So let us talk about the utility flow line. This utility flow line is all those sub line, all those sub, all those utility lines, sub line inside the process facility. Like now, we have an LPG facility that we are designing. But uh, that LPG facility, we also make use of maybe uh, line. those air line from a compressed air, air from from a air compression machine that actually uh, make uh, those your uh, this thing uh, 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 that you use uh, going to function to actually function those air line or you have fire Fire a water line within the system that you that you actually uh, use to fight uh, in terms if there is a fire outbreak, use it to fight that facility. Those lines are what we call utility line. They are not the main line of that. So that's why they are referred to as utility flow diagram. So that is that is just it. So this is the it's, it's we tell you that the utility flow diagram includes pipes, valves, and instrumentation. Yes, it includes it also of the fa of the facility utility. The utility are services that are essential for the proper function of the facility. Now you can see it's there are lines that are essential to the proper function of the facility. Not that it is the main facility. No. Your LPG, those are your main line. But your utility line are those lines that makes all those other parts of the facility to function. So they are also essential. So that is just it. So that is the difference between. So these are some common utility line that you see in industry. You have your steam, steam are utility line, your condensed air. Your utility air, your instrument air, your cooling water, your drainage system, and your flare system. Those are utility water system. Let me admit someone into the class. So those are um, those are what we call the utility water line. So we also have uh, the flow diagram instruments. What are those instruments that you see in your flow diagram? See, we have two basic form of instruments that you see, that you see in the, the flow in the flow diagram. So let's read up. To ensure the safe and efficient um, and efficient operation of the facility, controlling instrumentation is an absolute necessity. Controlling inst instrument function by sensing by sensing conditional change or in the commodity they monitor either in pipes or mechanical. The, the conditional changes comprise of four basic instruments. So these are four basic instruments that are actually kind of the process facility. <coughs> We tend to control the flow. Uh, hello, Mark. Yes. Please, there's one person here. I'll have to give me. He said he can't hear anything you're saying. I don't know. Maybe it's left to work or it's not being admitted. Please uh, let me check. It is actually him. It's actually him. Okay. Because uh, it's, act it's actually him. If you guys can hear me, that means it is him that is having issue. Maybe network or something like that. Just... So um, let me continue from where I started. So these are the four basic instruments. We have the flow, the level. This flow is to regulate flow. So that's why when we use valves and we put on maybe control valves, orifice, and the rest, these are to control the flow. And we also have uh, things that are there to control level such as your level gauge, your level transmitter, and so on and so on. You have the pressure gauge, this that seems to monitor pressure, and we also have temperature to monitor your 
temperature. But within this four instrument group, there are ways in which, okay, these four can be controlled and they can be monitored also. So we have the controller, we have the, we have the, we have the, we have the recorder. So this flow, con like now, if you see flow control, flow control is used to control the flow indicator. This flow indicator is used to monitor the like it indicates, okay, this fluid, uh, this fluid is actually flowing at this particular rate. Now, flow gauge. Flow gauge, let me see the indicator now. Yeah? The indicator works works like, okay, it indicates something. Like this gauge now, gauge is like a manual uh, form in which you place on site that you use to actually see and trace that flow. That that fluid is actually like we have the pressure gauge, it is mounted on site, the temperature gauge is mounted on site. But the indicator is something that transmits it into the control room so that you can be able to see the test. So we have the alarm. This alarm now, if you put that okay, oh, I don't want this fluid to actually um uh, run more than uh, 12 meter per second by speed and it is flowing and if it flows more than that it is supposed to alarm you so you so you will install a flow alarm that if it runs more than 12 meter per second or it flows more than 12 meter per second there will actually be alarm so let us talk about flow recorder now once we talk about Flow recorder. This actually records the flow. Like ah, at 6 p.m., the fluid was flowing at this setting. It records the flow data. Comfort. These are in this basic instrument. We use these five specific combination to actually either to control, to monitor, and to sense this and to record our data in process facility. The same thing goes to level control. You control the level, level indicator, you monitor the level from the control room. Level gauge, you monitor the level to that side. Level alarm. Once we done the finish, your gen supposed alarm you say, okay, oh, this thing done the this thing done the, the run out. You put level alarm. Level recorder, the same thing, it records the level as time interval when you load them and when you are so and so on. And so the same thing goes for pressure controller. The same thing goes for pressure controller. The same thing goes for the pressure controller. The same thing goes for the, the pressure indicator, pressure gauge, same as temperature. The same thing goes for all of them. So by learning the combination of these nine instrument groups and the type, students will be able to interpret most of the instrumentation right. So now, this is what we call a flow process diagram. Like now, okay, this is the flow process diagram. We have a feed operating at this temperature, uh, 210 this Fahrenheit at 255 PSI. For example, it goes in into a fractional distribution column because uh, if you look at this now, O1 V101, V101, then this is a uh, the propionizer. That means you just see like a fractional uh, 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 column. It breaks down the propane that is inside in order to give LPG and so on. So from this place now, uh, at this temperature. This guy now at this uh, 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 temperature with a level controller, with a level controller, it goes down into this reboiler here. And from this reboiler here, we have a heating medium utility flow diagram, maybe from a heater, turn down heat to this place. And where it condenses, it passes through this reboiler, it takes it back for the heating again, and then. Is the continuous process. 